praise God, we thank God this day once again. We are here with you. This is Touch of Hope, casting you the hope of glory. And this is some of the ministry. We trust God and we believe that as we are bringing this new series, the Lord will use it to be a blessing to you. I've said already a time and time this ministry has been in existence almost about 31 years now. And we, we are doing our best to impart our generation and to see what God has for us. And we will encourage you always to subscribe to our channel and also share the link and then make sure that you, 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 you click the bell so that anytime we put in something, you can find the notification there. Shall we share with a prayer? Father, we thank you. We bless you this day. We honor you that you speak to us by your way and nothing just by your way. I pray that may you be exalted above all things for when you are lifted high you will draw all men unto yourself i pray that this day lord draw all men unto yourself holy spirit guide us direct our lips that we will speak of you and no more and nothing else we thank you in jesus name amen I want to start a new series that is so dear to my heart and our team is something can still be done through jesus something can still be done through jesus Never, 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 there, there's no way for you to allow the layers and the challenges that you are going through cause you to think that God has forgotten about you. No, no. And never step out to do anything without God's consent. If you truly want to go far in life, it is so much important that whatever we choose to do, we need to involve God in. Because without God, we are nothing. <clears throat> And that's what the Bible has spoken to you. He said, said, Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. So I want to encourage all of us that for God to move on our behalf, we need to involve him. And in this passage in John chapter 2, we want to consider some few lessons. Normally we use this passage under marriages and weddings, but I want to assure you that God is going to take us to a new dimension through this passage. Now I believe that as we go through this exposition, the Lord will guide your step and open your understanding for you to find out what is going on wrong. And so when you set them right, you begin to find God working through your life. The first lesson we find in this passage in John chapter 2, the verse 1 to 11. Never invite Jesus into your life without giving him your full attention. Never invite Jesus into your life without giving him full attention. From verse 1 to verse 4, the Bible said, And the third day, and the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus answered, Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. You will realize that this marriage seems to have something to do with Jesus' family. But the Bible said Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, was there. Jesus himself was also there with his disciples. The Bible said they were invited into the marriage. Although they were invited into the marriage, they got to the place, took their seat, and nobody attended to them. Nobody served them water. Nobody gave them anything. And so the Bible said, Jesus then requested that, can you give us something? It was there that the mother of Jesus came and said, we have no wine. What am I saying? There are times that although we have invited Jesus into our life, as believers, we don't give him our full attention. They invited Jesus into the marriage feast, yet they never gave him attention. We can never go far in this life just because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. 
That's why sometimes you see the unbelievers making it. And sometimes believers even become jealous and envious about their sources. When you invite Jesus into your life, you need to give him your full attention so that he will guide your step. For the Bible said the steps of the just are ordered by the Lord and he delights in their ways. I pray this morning that we begin to change our mindset to know that it's not just enough for us to invite Jesus into our life. But whether in our marriage, whether in our business, whatever that we are doing, when we invite him, we should give him the full attention that he needs. It is there that we begin to see the mighty works in his hands. Then the Bible says that the mother of Jesus told that we don't have anything. Jesus made the statement. He never referred to the mother as a mother, but he said woman, because as at that time, he was under the influence of his ministry. And said, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Maybe it may seem that your hour has not yet come. Maybe you think something is just delaying. But let's see the next key point here. The second point. The key to God's blessings over your life is only connected to your total obedience. Your total obedience. Or the total obedience. When you look at the verse 5 to verse 8, look at what Jesus' mother did, Mary did. She could have been offended. Now look at how my son is talking to me in public. But Mary wasn't offended. Mary needed Jesus' involvement to avoid disgrace and shame under the marriage things. And so Mary then turned from Jesus and looked unto the servant. The Bible said in from verse 5 up to verse 8. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there was set there six water pot of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three franken apples. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pot with water. And they filled them up to the brim, and he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the fields, and they bear it. The mother of Jesus, oh, I love this, praise God, was never discouraged, was never disturbed by the answers that Jesus gave to her. Jesus even never addressed her as a mother, but she said, woman. I love Mary because from Jesus' childhood, even as at the time that the angel came concerning his birth, he said, be it unto me according to your way. She understands spiritual principles. There was one time Jesus, I think Luke chapter 2, that Jesus has got him missing. That's how they saw it, but Jesus was somewhere with the, the, the Sahin priests and, and the doctors and it was, he was explaining the scripture to them at the age of 12 years and when they got to him and said son we've been looking for you all this while and said don't you know that I must mind the business of my father the Bible said and his mother kept all the sin in, this, in her heart so Mary understands spiritual principle concerning the son then turned from the son and, uh, to the servant and said look whatsoever he tells you just do it Anything this man tells you, just be obedient to it. Our problem as believers is that we are not willing to obey God. We have our own calculations of doing things. We have our own way of analyzing things. We have our own way in going about things. And uh, sometimes we speak like the way unbelievers speak. Sometimes we begin to push the word of God aside and pay attention. Look at even when the scientists are giving us directives that we should put on our nose mask, we should wash our hands, we should do it because we are afraid that we will die. We obey, but when it comes to the word of God, the internal word of God, we don't really want to obey. We are left behind with our miracles, not because God is a wicked God, not because God don't want to bless us, but because we don't obey. It's a whatsoever He tells you, do it. Believers, 
gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if we can just do what the word of God is telling us, if we can just obey the directions of God, if we can just do what God is telling us, we will find miracles. Then the Bible said, Jesus told them, it's a further water pot. The Bible said that they also obeyed. The servant obeyed what Mary told them. So you could see the change. You could see how each person is just responding to their responsibilities. And the Bible said, and they bear it and drink it. I love this. What a mighty God we say. God is a faithful God and he will never neglect us. The point three. The best part of your life is yet to manifest. So don't worry about those who are ahead of you. The best part of your life is yet to manifest. So don't worry about those who are ahead of you. From the verse 9 and 10, the Bible said, When the ruler of the fields has tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants withdrew the water new, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. You think life is just taking you down. You think that life has come to an end. You think people are ahead of you. But I want to tell you, look at what the governor said. He said, why have you kept the best at the end? You have not married and sometimes you think that God is neglecting you. You think that God has forgotten you. Let, let me tell you, the best is yet to come. But the Bible said the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. The governor said, why have you kept this? Let me tell you, life is not a competition. He makes all things beautiful in his own time. So you have to be happy. You have to rejoice with the sources of others. If somebody is getting married, bless the person, sow into that person's marriage, and be happy for the person, and be waiting for your time. Because the God who did it for that person, the same God will do it for you. He has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It's a miracle working God, and He will surely bless you. I want to tell you, the best is yet to come. Don't kill yourself. You that think that life is so difficult, you want to cause suicide, don't kill yourself. You that think that life is so difficult, and so you want to engage in drinking, don't kill yourself, because the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. The fourth point I want us to talk about it, is so amazing. And the Bible said, the fourth point, God always want to begin something new with your life for his glory. God always, not sometimes, always want to do or begin something new in your life. The verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. God is about to do something new in your life. God wants to begin something in your life. The couple talked out, they just came in and, 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 and gave something to Jesus Christ. They thought that, well, oh, I, I don't think that this man, well, he may take some seed and other things, but he didn't know that inviting Jesus under their marriage is going to be or bring a glory and honor into their marriage phase. Without Jesus, there would have been shame and disgrace. There would have been a, 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 a problem. People would have, yeah, we even came to the marriage and we, nothing was said to us. see, Jesus Christ is always there. To manifest his glory. There is something you are going through in life. There are challenges that are confronting you. There are things 
that are facing you, you don't have access to them. I want to tell you, God is about to begin something new in your life. The Bible says that this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Galilee, in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and the disciples believed on him. God is about to do something that those who don't believe in you, those who think that you amount to nothing, they will begin to believe in God because you used to sleep in front of in front of somebody's chaos. How come that today you are living in your own mansion? You, 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 you've never been to school before, but how come you are now an owner of a company and you have employed people who are holding PhDs and masters? How come? God always wants to begin something with his children. God always wants to do something new with his children. God always wants to turn things around. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to let you understand one thing, that you have to understand that something can still be done through Jesus Christ. When they thought everything has come to an end, Jesus Christ move on behalf of this people. Let me conclude by saying that there is a manifest glory waiting for you today. If only you can allow him to take his praise in your life, then your lot of days will be better off. Let me repeat it. There is a manifest glory waiting for you today. If you can only allow him to take his praise in your life, then your latter days can be better off. Are you here? He said, Pastor, I don't know where to turn to. I don't know where to go. There is a savior. Jesus was invited into the married field. This morning is also, it is his turn and he's inviting you. He said, I stand at the door knocking. If any man will hear my voice and open, I will come in and die with him. You want to accept Jesus into your heart. And when it comes today, you'll be with him in eternity. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you today for your word that I've come to. I need you in my life. Wash me with your blood because I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to save you. I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Let me pray with you. Father, we want to bless you, we want to honor you for all those that have heard your word. And it is my prayer that God will continue to be with us and show forth your manifest glory in our lives. Strengthen us and guide us. And I know that, Lord, your power will be made manifest in our life. I want to encourage you. Just write, make a comment and write that. Just, just write that under, the, under your comment. Something can still be done through Jesus. May this be your confession every day, every moment. Write that comment there. And I know that God will be a blessing to you. My name is Samuel Obese. And God willing, next week, we'll come with you with a part two. God bless you. Amen.